Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah wahda Wa salatu wa salamu ala man la nabiyya ba'da Amma ba'd An wahshi ibn harbin radiyallahu ta'ala anhu Anna ashabu rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallama Qalu Ya rasulallah Inna na'kulu wa la nashba'u Qala Fala'allakum taftariqun Qalu na'am Qala fajtami'u ala ta'amikum Wazkuru ismallahi Yubarak lakum fihi Rawahu Abu Dawuda Rahimahullahu ta'ala In This chapter of Kitabu Adab al-Ta'am The Etiquettes of Eating Imam Nawi Rahmatullahi Ali Has mentioned Different titles, different subtitles And now Imam Nawi Rahmatullahi Ali Has come to that etiquette of eating in which he has mentioned a title that what should that individual say or do that individual who eats but he is not satiated he doesn't feel full under this title he brings one hadith on the authority of Wahshi ibn Harb radiallahu ta'ala an. Many of us must know that Wahshi ibn Harb radiallahu ta'ala anhu is and was a great sahabi and companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But prior to accepting Islam, he killed the uncle of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Haza Hamza radiallahu ta'ala anhu. But after fath Makkah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted him the divine ability, granted him tawfiq. He accepts Islam. And not only does he accept Islam, but he stays steadfast on Islam. And he does a lot of khidmat for the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Musaylama Kazab, that individual, who falsely claimed to be a prophet after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When the battle between the Muslims and Musaylama and his followers took place, then the Muslims, they overcame the army of Musaylama and his people. And the individual to kill Musaylama was none other than Wahshi ibn Harb radiallahu ta'ala. And remembering his life before Islam and remembering his life after Islam, Wahshi ibn Harb radiallahu ta'ala anhu used to say, Ke qataltu khayran nasi fil jahiliya wa qataltu sharran nasi fil Islam. That in my days of jahiliya, in my days of ignorance, in my days in which I was a disbeliever, I killed the best person that I could have known. One of the best of people. And that was none other than Hamza radiallahu ta'ala an, the uncle of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he used to say, وَقَتَلْتُ شَرَّ النَّاسِ فِي Islam." After I accepted Islam, after I believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then I killed the most evil individual on the surface of this earth, the worst person on the surface of this earth, and that is none other than Musaylama Kazab, that individual who falsely claimed to be a prophet of Allah. So this is Wahshi ibn Harb radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrating this hadith. And Wahshi ibn Harb radiallahu ta'ala anhu was not forced to accept Islam. Rather, when Fath Makkah and the conquest of Makkah took place, then Wahshi radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he had run away to Taif. If he wanted, he could have run away further. He could have gone further. But he came into the khidmah in the company of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he accepted Islam. So Wahshi bin Harb radiallahu ta'ala anhu is that individual who killed Hamza radiallahu ta'ala anhu, one of the best people. But at the same time, he's that same individual who killed one of the worst people on the surface of this earth and that's Musaylama Kadhaab. One lesson that we learn before even going into the hadith, just from the life of Wahshi bin Harb radiallahu ta'ala anhu is 
that no matter how many sins you find in an individual's life, never look down upon that individual. Yes. Look down upon the sin. Don't look down upon the sin. Look down upon the spiritual illness. Don't look down upon that individual who is going through that spiritual illness. You have an individual, he's drinking wine, he's drinking alcohol. Look down upon drinking alcohol, that's a sin. Look down upon drinking wine, that's a sin. But don't look down upon that individual who is drinking alcohol. Someone, he's very fond of lying. He's habituated to lying. So find that sin of lying bad. Keep it in your heart and mind, this is something bad. Look down upon that sin, but don't look down upon that individual who is carrying out that sin. Wahshi bin Harb radiallahu ta'ala anhu, this is what we learned from his life. Prior to Islam, he killed Hamza radiallahu ta'ala anhu. But after accepting Islam, look at how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens the doors for him. He accepts Islam and he stays steadfast on Islam. And he does lots of khidmat of deen also. We will find many waqiat, many, many stories in history where an individual, he was a thief, he was a robber, he used to drink wine, he used to drink alcohol, but he did tawbah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala paves the way for him. Allah grants him divine ability and tawfiq and that individual becomes a special friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he becomes a wali. He becomes from those pious individuals that we remember today. There are so many awliya and so many friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that have passed away in the past. That prior to them doing tawbah or prior to them accepting Islam, their life was a life full of the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants them the tawfiq and Allah changes and wants to change their entire life and then they turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they become one of the greatest slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the surface of this earth. Many incidents we will find in the past. This is another example of those incidents, Hazrat Wahshi bin Harb radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And one more thing, that never look down upon that individual. Never. Not just any individual, any type of individual. Whether someone is committing a sin, whether someone is not committing a sin. We will find usually three types of individuals. One is an individual who we see, mashallah, they come to the masjid, they're praying their five times daily salah, we know they recite the Qur'an, they may be waking up for tahajjud salah, they may be fasting on a regular basis. So an individual that we know is carrying out a lot of good deeds and we find themselves to be better than us. It's not hard to think of that person to be better than me because you see it for yourself, that you see in your own life, I have so many sins and I have so many disobediences. And that individual, you don't know about his sins, but you know about all his good deeds. So it's easy to look up to that person and think that this individual is someone who is better than me. So that's easy. But then you have that individual who you know is carrying out a sin. You've seen him with your own eyes. That he's drinking wine or na'udhu billah, he's talking to the opposite gender or he has illicit relationships or he's lying, or he's deceiving someone, he's a fraud, whatever the case may be, you know and you've seen it for yourself that this individual is a sinner. You can ask, how can I look up to that individual? How can I think that he's better than me when I know he's carrying out so and so sin? The mashayikh, the scholars, they give an answer to that and they say that the way we can Think of ourselves to be inferior and that person to be better in our eyes is that always have this thought in mind that on the day of Qiyamah tomorrow, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one way He will judge the creation is amal and deeds will be presented. And they will be weighed in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I don't know how weighty my good deeds are and I don't know how weighty that individual's good deeds will be. It's possible that he has many disobediences and many sins, but one good deed of his becomes so weighty that it overpowers all his bad deeds. All his bad deeds on one side, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at that one good deed 
that he carried out with so much sincerity and he says, because of this good deed, I forgive you and go, I grant you Jannah. And it's possible that all my good deeds on one side and one disobedience of mine becomes so weighty that this disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala overpowers all my good deeds. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, all your good deeds on one side, this one disobedience throws you into the fire of Jahannam. This is one way that we can think and when we see someone that they're a disobedient servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is one way we don't look down upon that individual. We still feel that it's possible Allah likes such a good deed of that individual that I don't know. And Allah grants him entry into Jannah. And the third type of individual is an individual who has iman and no good deeds. He has no good deeds. Even such an individual we look up to. And we find ourselves inferior because we don't know what the future holds. Just like Wahshi bin Harr radiallahu anhu, an individual who was in kufr in disbelief, an individual who killed one of the most beloved people to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa When Allah decides to change lives, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted Wahshi bin Harr radiallahu ta'ala anhu the status of a companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a sahabi, that you and I and no one after the sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu can equal the status of Wahshi bin Habr radiallahu ta'ala. This is why no matter who we see, no matter what sin we find that individual in, we should never find that, self, that individual to be inferior. We should never look down upon that individual. We should always think of that individual to be better than ourselves. So this is one lesson that we learn from the life of Wahshi bin Harb radiallahu ta'ala. And another Lesson that we learn from the life of Wahshi bin Harb radiallahu ta'ala anhu is that when Wahshi bin Harb radiallahu ta'ala anhu came into the company of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he accepted Islam. When he accepted Islam, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam forgave him. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explained to him that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has also forgiven him for his past. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was also a human. He also had a heart. He also had feelings. He knew that Wahshi radiallahu ta'ala anhu was that individual who killed my uncle. So when Wahshi radiallahu ta'ala anhu came into the company of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told him that don't come in front of me. Because when I see you, when my gaze falls upon you, then I remember the shahada of my uncle Hamza radiallahu anhu. And look at the sacrifice of Wahshi radiallahu anh. Look at how mukhlis and how sincere he was. The Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told him once that don't come in front of me. After that day, he never came in front of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He used to come and sit in the company of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He used to go for the ziyarah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to see Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But he used to do it in such a manner that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's gaze does not fall on him. Because he knew that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has forgiven me. He forgave me. But he is still displeased. He still has that in his heart that this is that individual who killed my uncle. The lesson we learn from this is there's two things. One is forgiveness and one is that person who forgives us being pleased with us. Forgiving, this is in our ikhtiyar. This is something that we have control over. Someone comes and asks you for forgiveness, you can forgive them. Someone deceives you, you can tell them, I forgive you. Tomorrow on the day of Qiyamah, you won't, be, you won't be held accountable. Someone steals from you. They come and ask you for forgiveness, you forgive them. They won't be held accountable tomorrow on the day of Qiyamah because you forgave them. Someone, there's a dhulm and oppression on you. They come and ask you for forgiveness, you forgive them. Tomorrow on the day of Qiyamah, they won't be held accountable because you forgave them. But becoming pleased with them, your heart being happy with them, this is not in your ikhtiyar. This is not in your control. This is something which is fitratan taba'an. This is something which is natural. If they've hurt you in such a manner that now your heart is not pleased, this is something which you have no control over. Wahshi radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He came in the company of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa He asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa for forgiveness. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa forgave him. But despite that, his heart was still had that in his heart. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa still had that factor in his heart that this individual killed my uncle. 
So this was not something in the control of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Now one thing is asking for forgiveness also. Nowadays, what do we do? We harm someone, sorry. We do zulm, sorry. We take someone's money, sorry. Sorry does not do justice. When it comes to forgiveness, it is necessary that you ask that individual for forgiveness and that individual from deep down in his heart, he forgives you. He tells you that I've forgiven you. What you've done to me, you've harmed me, you've lied to me, you've deceived me. You've stolen money from me. You've done dhulm and oppression on me. Whatever the case is, that individual says that I've forgiven you. This is forgiveness. You coming and saying sorry, and that individual not accepting that apology, not accepting that, he hasn't forgiven you. You can still be held accountable tomorrow on the day of the year. The person who you harm, that individual must say deep down from his heart that I've forgiven you. Then this apology is an apology accepted. This is known as that individual forgiving you. So one is forgiveness and one is a person becoming happy with you. Now when it comes to the normal masses, the normal Muslims, like you and I, then if we harm someone, then it's necessary that they for, that if we harm someone, then the individual we harm, they forgive us. So we go to them, we make sure that we let them know that we understand what we've done is wrong. We ask for forgiveness. We keep asking for forgiveness until they finally accept our forgiveness and they say that, okay, you're free. I've forgiven you. Tomorrow on the day of Qiyamah, you will not be held accountable. This is for the normal mass, for the normal Muslim. But there's some types of individuals, three types of individuals, whom not only do we have to ask for forgiveness, but after asking for forgiveness, we must make sure that they become pleased with us. Because if we don't, then we are in loss in this dunya, we are in loss in the akhir. Who are those three types of individuals? Number one, the parents. If, if we displease our parents in a manner which is not, in, in a matter which is not contrary to the sharia. So we disobey them, whereas they're not telling us to do anything against the sharia. But we still disobey them. We displease them. If we go and ask them for forgiveness, we must ask for forgiveness, and they forgive us, then alhamdulillah. But with that, we must make sure they become happy with us. Because if they don't become pleased with us, this becomes a means of losing barakah in this worldly life. And it could be a means of harm and calamity in the hereafter. This is the first type of individuals, the parents. The second group of individuals, the asatida, our teachers, whom we gain Islamic knowledge from. If we harm them, if we cause inconvenience to them, then we lose out in barakah in our ilm and in our knowledge. Allah will not grant us barakah in our ilm and knowledge. And the third type of individuals whom we must not harm and if we do, then we must make sure we ask for forgiveness and we must make sure that they become pleased with us are the mashayikh, our spiritual mentors. Because them becoming displeased with us is a sign and a means of losing out on spiritual progress. Our ruhaniyat, our spirituality, it is a means of losing out on our spiritual progress. So from the life of Wahshi radiallahu ta'ala anhu, I was mentioning that we learn, number one, never look down upon any individual. Whether that individual is someone who carries out good deeds, whether it's someone who doesn't carry out good deeds, or whether it's someone that is a sinner. Look down upon the sin, don't look down upon the sinner. And number two, the lesson that we le learn from Wahshi radiallahu ta'ala on whose life is that there are three groups of individuals that we must make sure we ask for forgiveness if we harm them and with that we must make sure that they become pleased with us. Our parents, our asatida, our teachers and our mashayikh, our spiritual mentors. Inshallah, in our next session, next week, we will move on with the hadith which is mentioned on the authority of Wahshi bin Harb radiallahu ta'ala anhu may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us all to understand these lessons that were taken out from the life of Wahshi radiallahu ta'ala anhu may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all from those individuals who act upon the Quran and the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam make us from those individuals 
who truly understand the teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and who truly implement them into our lives. Ameen. Wa akhiru da'wana anil hamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salli allahumma wa sallim ala sayyidina wa nabiyina wa maulana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Also just a, a, a short announcement, an important announcement. One of my close relatives from my father's side has passed away. I would just like to request all the brothers seated here or wherever my voice is reaching at this moment that if they can please make some dua for the deceased if they can what if they can pray something they can send any good deeds towards the deceased then please do so and especially remember them in your duas this is a uh, death is such a stage that each and every one of us has to go through so today that deceased is an individual who is in need of good deeds till till just a few moments ago they were like you and I in this world we say one subhanallah, we say one alhamdulillah, we still have that opportunity to gain good deeds. But today that individual has been deprived of them. So every good deed we do, it is very, it's it's looked very high upon and it has a very high status in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So today we are in that situation where we can send good deeds to another individual. Tomorrow that stage will come where we will pass away and we will be in need of good deeds. My beloved Shaykh, Daud Barakatuh Mullah he mentions that his father, Rahmatullahi Ali, used to mention that if we send Isal Thawab and we send good deeds to a deceased, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make the means that when we pass away, people will make dua for us, people will send good deeds to us also. So once again, this individual has passed away, let us make dua for them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive them of their shortcomings. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant her a very high status in Jannatul Firdaus. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also make our ends easy. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant each and every one of us husn khatima and a good death. Jazakum.